we looked at how vehicle weight has risen continuously over the decades and how recent years have seen an even more pressing need to reduce weight in order to reduce fuel consumption and hence harmful emissions. In this slide, we compare three models of the Mark 7 Golf with equivalent performance but different types of powertrain. We have one petrol model, which is the lightest but has high CO2 emissions, one hybrid model, and one all-electric model, which has almost zero CO2 emissions but weighs nearly 300 kilograms more than its petrol counterpart. This weight increase is mainly attributed to the considerable weight of the batteries, which also increases the thermal stress on the braking system. So the question is, do braking systems need to be even more powerful than they already are because of the additional weight of batteries? Or is this offset by the fact that electric vehicles make significant use of regenerative braking and do not rely solely on traditional friction braking? In other words, how should the brakes of tomorrow be designed and what criteria should they meet? The fact that hybrid and electric vehicles benefit from regenerative braking needs to be taken into account when establishing the design criteria. The presence of the regenerative brake means that the vehicle requires much lesser use of the traditional friction brake than a car with an internal combustion engine. In theory, therefore, braking systems can be downsized and made with smaller brake discs. Having said that, safety must be factored in. It is vital that the brakes deliver their maximum performance even without regenerative braking, because in certain conditions, regenerative braking is unable to work. The low noise of electric vehicles makes it even more important that no noise should come from the braking system. Comfort under braking has long been an important goal for manufacturers, and it will be even more important with electric vehicles. Eliminating residual torque is another necessity, which is even more important for electric vehicles than for cars with traditional powertrains. Residual torque in electric vehicles can compromise the energy balance of the system and hence the range. The fact that electric vehicles make less frequent use of friction brakes can lead to undue corrosion of the brake discs and pads. Furthermore, the friction coefficient must be stable even if the braking system has been left unused for long periods. It is therefore clear that brakes for electric vehicles require dedicated development, and this opens up considerable potential for innovation in the fields of corrosion prevention, friction materials, and lightweight design. In the final part of this training course, we'll take a look at the possible effects of these changes on the car and component market. Let's start by looking at the case of BMW and how its product range has evolved over the course of the company's history. Until 20 years ago, the BMW range did not exceed eight models on the European market. Today, BMW has over 20 different models on the market with 40 different powertrains. The majority of manufacturers have followed a similar development pathway and their product ranges have undoubtedly become much more complex and varied over the years. We're talking about a global market in which 98% of the cars on sale are still powered by internal combustion engines. Even now, hybrids and electric vehicles still account for only a tiny percentage of the world market. How much this will grow in the years to come is impossible to gauge, but all the indicators suggest that its growth will certainly be substantial, and this will lead to even more variety and a higher degree of model diversification than we already have today. As we've seen, the automotive market of tomorrow will be shaped by a wide range of factors. Firstly, environmental sustainability. New regulations will be put in place. Legislators will have far-reaching decisions to make and certain emerging markets will make a major contribution to these decisions. New technologies, electrification, the strategic choices of manufacturers and the presence of new players that joined the market only a few years ago. Lastly, a new generation of users, system connectivity and the new levels achieved by autonomous driving technology. 
All these factors will affect the automotive market of tomorrow. On top of everything we've looked at so far, we're also aware that these changes may happen very quickly, similar to the latest changes in communication. Within a very short space of time, we've switched from landlines to smartphones, from paper to computers, from printed media to the Internet, and from in-person communication to social media interaction. All in just under 15 years. What we've learned is that things change rapidly when a range of new technologies converge into new products. The companies and professionals operating in the industries concerned need to be ready not only to recognize change and follow it, but to use their know-how to shape it and reap the new opportunities that change always brings with it. That's why we believe that everything depends on knowledge, the knowledge and ability to develop the new technologies that the market needs, the ability to access data and information, the ability to offer new products and services, the willingness to embrace digital transformation and professionalization, and above all, the desire and ability to study and keep up to date in a constantly changing world.